Okay, the good law city council meeting Monday, April the 6th, 2015, with order at 7 p.m. We have a call, a uh, roll call, rather, please. Yeah. Oh, Gene tried to escape on me. Huh? This is interesting. You started, uh, I heard you started in there. Get a roll call, if you would. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybacher? Yo. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present here. Thank you. We'll now have the invocation by Council Member Bill McIntyre. Let everyone stand, please. Let us pray. Lord, the Easter season represents a triumph over death and a reminder of the universal covenant we share with you and with our community. In this time of great hope and rebirth, let our hearts strive to do your will. The spring is a season in which the smallest seed begins to grow into a mighty oak. Let this assembled body have the opportunity to plant those seeds through our decisions here so that the future of New Carlisle can be strong. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Now if you uh, join me in the pledge, will you use the flag in the back, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Have a little housekeeping before we continue on. If you have a cell phone, you can turn on a vibrator, turn it off, please. We'd certainly appreciate it. And a couple other things I want everyone to I'll let you know that the shelter house, this shelter house is available to rent. If you're called the city building, they'll be happy to talk to you about it. I don't know what days it would be available. And New Carlisle Cemetery also has grave sites for sale. Again, you can call the city building. Uh, it's not 845-9492, and they'd be happy to talk to you about it. So we shall go on now. Uh, action on the minutes, please. So moved. Second. Did I have that second for Mr. McIntyre? Mr. Reynolds, but that's all right. Mr. Reynolds, I believe. Any discussion? Any discussion, Council? No, sir. Can call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, communications. Any communications this evening? None tonight. Okay, then we'll go into city manager's report, please. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council, uh, members of the public. Um, I just have some informational items um, for tonight. Is there any members have questions before I get to the informational thing? Any questions for city manager? Yes, sir. I, I, yeah, I do have one. Um, a couple weeks ago, in a Springfield taper, I think the call the state was talking about the um, contamination in the Lake Erie watershed, which is what happened in Grand Lake St. Mary's. Now, I know the watershed for Lake Erie goes north, and it's, it's not for us, but they were talking about more regulations and whatnot, farm runoff or whatever that goes into it. Um, I was just wondering how, how we are with that. I know that we, we monitor what goes into the Honey Creek and keep an eye on it, but with the new discussion on it, um, how are we doing as far as environmental-wise with the Honey Creek? We're currently following all the mandated rules by the state and the EPA. Uh, they are looking at new rules that could potentially be out there to that affects Honey Creek, which could affect us to reduce some contam uh, or reduce the contaminants to a lower amount. But as far as any kind of um, farm field runoff or anything like that, we currently don't have any. Um, most of the applications by different companies or farmers in our area abide by the, the rules that DPA sets and that I know we don't have any serious runoff or algae bloom issues. Okay, so it's not, it's, it would be from the farms that are outside of our jurisdiction and we do uh, keep close contact with state and federal agencies to make sure we're abiding by all rules. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir, go ahead. Just to add on to that, um, the Speedway, I saw that they were working there awful hard on the, on the wells. Is, you know, is there anything wrong with the Speedway? Um, I can't speak on behalf of uh, Speedway, but I think they were doing some testing 
on some existing tanks. I still know that they're working on their gas extraction or the vapor extraction with that trailer that's sitting in a corner. Yeah. And that's ongoing um, to do any kind of removals that they may have left. But they were just testing, I think, a couple of their tanks on the east side speedway. Yeah. Anyone else? Any questions? Okay, can you continue, sir? Uh, under G and informational items, um, item number one, oh, we need to uh, have a motion to accept Mr. Alvin Putterbaugh's resignation from the Board of Zoning Appeals, the BZA. Council? So moved. Second. All set. Any questions, anyone? Can you go ahead and call for the vote, please? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. And under item uh, number two, uh, Mr. Alvin Putterbaugh was, uh, had applied for the planning board position in, in the city. Uh, you cannot pr um, be on two boards at the same right. time. So we just need a motion to appoint Mr. Putterbaugh as, uh, to the planning board. Uh, Council. Second. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Absolutely. Mr. McIntyre. This time out, and I will vote yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Riddle. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Now you know what you're into, Alvin. Was there an opening? How much? Was there an opening? Um, with that being said, with those, uh, what was the, oh, the, we did have an opening, of a, uh, opening on the planning board. Okay. We did have a member resign. Who uh, resigned? Mrs. Mumal. Okay. Yeah, and with that, that, with that being said, the, now the Board of Zoning Appeals will have a vacancy, and I think there are some interested applicants, uh, at least two over three that I know of. We have someone on the Human Rights Board who has availability for the planning board. I will reach out to her to see if she would like to take that vacancy on the Board of Zoning Appeals since it starts at 5.30 that might accommodate her work schedule. Just to let everybody know, it's very difficult to get people to step forward for all the boards and so forth the city has to fill. So if you know of anyone or yourself would like to be involved, please contact the city offices. They'd be happy to show you the application or whatever it may be to be able to do the different boards. And I think we posted on what's open. Do we not on the board at the city building? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a couple items that uh, came to me um, since we did the agenda. Uh, we have a TCC had sent a letter that we received today. They are, uh, had approved the resolution at their board meeting to do a one-time suspension of dues for uh, all its members. A half year dues worth uh, $875. So they will invoice then for the second half. Uh, but the dues go towards helping with federal matching and help all our organizations that belong uh, with their planning or uh, acquiring some grant funds or grant or loan funds. And item would be item number four. I just want to, uh, since Friday was a holiday for the city, we uh, heard about late that there was a tornado warning uh, just north of New Carlisle. New Carlisle was involved in it. And I did receive my phone call from dispatch letting me know that they were setting off the tornado sirens due to the National Weather Service uh, determining there was a tornado warning. The hyper reach was activated and their findings afterwards was that there was an EF0 tornado north of town near the Stafford and 41 area. So I just want to put out there are some extra flyers for the hyper reach uh, for Clark County residents only. You can fill them out. They give you. We, usually, we're only getting a call once a month during the testing, just to tell you there's no emergency. Or, for instance, on uh, Friday evening, they activated the hyper reach, and anyone who was on there was notified that there was a tornado warning. Also, but I would like to add to that that the tornado sirens are for outdoor purposes. People who are outside their homes. If you can hear it inside your home, um, you are lucky. Feel fortunate. Um, but they are for mainly if it's kids playing outside, people working in a garden, whatever it is, 
but it's for outside audible purposes only. Uh, you saw on the news and that uh, Moorfield Township just was getting their tornado sirens in and they're working on educating their folks because I think a lot of them think that that's for internal uh, sound also. Uh, the other thing would be is a weather radio. A weather radio is probably the best if, uh, device that you can have that will get you the information quickly uh, for tornado warnings or any other warning for that matter. And they are battery backup, so regardless of what kind of power you're on, um, it, it should work. And Mayor, I think that is all I have. Any questions for the city manager? Yes, I, I do have a question about the tornado siren. Just to clear it up and see if I'm on the, the right track here. Um, when when that happened and you received the phone call, not the siren, but we received the phone call from the automated service letting you know the severe weather in the area. We received it, at least when I heard from residents, they received their phone call after the storm had moved out of the area. The issue with that, I believe, when, when I saw the radar, it was a very small storm, and if I'm not mistaken, the weather service which calls our phones is located in Springfield, and so when severe weather hits Springfield, then the call goes out to everyone. So if it was just a new Carlisle, Carl not yet the Springfield, it, it wouldn't go off, am I mistaken in that? Uh, the, the, uh National Weather Service located in Wilmington are the ones who designate when that siren will go off unless there are someone, an official fire department or someone physically spots a tornado touchdown and 911 is called or whatever, then the sirens get set off on another manner. But the sirens are set off on a tornado warning designation. So if, whether it's the radio station or, or the National Weather Service, if they set a tornado and it just so happens that when they decided, oh, we have a tornado warning, that's when they set them off. By that time, like maybe it happened in this case, it got through New Carlisle, and that's when they were set off. Yeah, so, the, the severe alert was only for a few minutes, but still that's a crucial few minutes. It doesn't take long for a tornado to come down, but that's one of the things that, it, that already passed before we got the call. The, the nighttime is the toughest from what I understand. We've been reading a lot on this, is if no, nothing is spotted visually, they go by the weather services meteorologists. And when they designate that there's a tornado warning, then that's when they'll be set off. Okay, so um, not, not the threat that there's going to be a tornado warning, but when there's actually issued a tornado warning. So again, just watch the news or have a weather radio and listen for the siren and make <coughs> good judgments. Yes. Mr. Zemp. I might also point out that you can get an application for your cell phone. That's where we got notified was on the cell phone. So then I turned on the TV. And Brian Davis said it was almost gone. He said, hey, it's out of here. I went down to the basement <coughs> and it was out of there. And then we got the phone call saying, hey, that was so, it, they are a little slow on take up on that particular thing. But we also heard the siren at our house and we're not that close. Yeah, I, I will check on to make sure that the, pr the procedure is, if, if it's not already streamlined, what could make it more streamlined? Yeah. And just make sure there's no, <coughs> per se, middleman that maybe might be slowing this down. And that was a 15 minute window. Because I got my first alert at uh, either 8:30 or 9:30, whatever it was, and in 15 minutes it was gone. So, okay. Anyone else? Any questions? Before we go on, uh, I'm burning up in here. I don't know if anyone else is. Can we turn the fans on here, if you don't mind? Because I'm, I think it's hot in here. I'm having a hot flash. So I'll announce it. He's going to announce it now. Everybody knows. It's an AGE thing. What else can I do? It is hot, hot, hot. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We are now at the uh, comments from members of the public. Would anyone like to speak this evening? Let's start in the front. We're going to start in the front, and then we'll go from there, please. If you go up to the podium and announce your name, please, and your address. Mayor, members of council, my name is Kathy Boyd Cohen. I'm here tonight representing the new Carlisle News. Um, recently, we did a public records request for some information regarding the fire department. And I note that Chief Phillips is not here to answer the questions, but perhaps your city manager or your um, someone else might be able to answer these questions. Do you happen to know how many firefighters on the new Carlisle department wear leather helmets? 
If I could ask you to do this, if you could write down what you're after as mm -hmm. far as questions and then get them to the acting city manager, which he can then get to the fire chief, and I'm sure we can get all the answers that you require. Okay, if those We'd love would to do be... That because there's nobody here that really knows the answers of what you're after at the moment, I don't believe. And he's not supposed to be here except the second meeting of the month. Okay. Well, we will send those by email to the acting city manager from Mr. Grimm. Sure. And we'll hope that we get a timely response. That would be wonderful. Thank and we would you. appreciate it. Thank you. Mayor. Yes. Kathy, can I get your full name again? Kathy with a K, K A T H Y. Voitko, V as in Victor, O, Y as in yes, T as in Tom, K O. V O Y T K O. V as in Victor. But if you'll get those to us, we'll be happy to get them answered for you. No problem on that. All right, who else would like to go? Go ahead, please. Lee Moore at 301 North Church Street. Um, I've been on the bike trail since the weather's been nice, and I've noticed that it's just littered with, I mean, there's just trash completely down both sides of it, and it's filthy, and it's beer cans, and it's needles, and it's I mean, not that I've got in it, but it's just completely filthy. But I can get past that. But every time I've tried to go down that path, I've been stopped by drunk transients that are just hanging out at the end of the trail down where the, where the new bridge is. And at the other end, any time you get in a secluded area, they're just hanging out there all day long. It's not during school hours, so I know it's not teenagers. So I'm just concerned about okay. homeless people living in the woods there, you know, because I know that they do. They have camps up in the woods. Mm -hmm. I just think it's kind of dangerous for people. They should be aware that... You're that's talking a, that's the a bridge risk. at 235, uh -huh. 235, that bridge in that area? Uh -huh. Okay. And they do have camps in the woods? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, they live in the cullers, too. Mm-hmm. They do? Really? Yeah, they were staying under the bridge for a while, but the police busted them down there because they built a fire. And so they were thrown out down there, and now they just camp up in the woods wherever. Someone's mm -hmm. going to get assaulted or robbed going down through there. Let, let me ask this question. Uh, Mr. Kitko, would it be possible to get some prisoners out this way to help clean that path up, do you think? We'll, we'll get it cleaned up one way or another. So we'll try and do that. The prisoners maybe come over and help clean. That would be and, great. Uh, as you know, our deputy situation is not the greatest oh, at I know. this time. Yeah. So we're trying to do the best we can, and I'm sure they'll check into what you just mentioned. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Who's next? Anybody else like to speak? Go ahead. I just want a, a Victoria Portner, 210 West Madison Street. I just wanted to continue with the warn system. I'm the one that actually takes care of it. Um, it's not only for tornado warnings. It's for boil advisories. It's for um, gas leaks. It, if there's a pinpoint on a situation, of an emergency situation, not only does the police department, but the fire department utilizes it and warns anyone in the vicinity of that area. So it's not only a tornado warning, it's a boil advisory, any kind of a mate, if there's a criminal in the area, you know, we used it for those people that were breaking into those homes. So it's, it's a very nice program. And we push it every time someone comes into sign up for their home, new home or something to like that. When they apply for water, they also get a warn system to fill out and they could turn it back into me and then I fax them on a regular basis to the people to make sure that they get signed up. I, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the input. We appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Up to the podium if you would. My name is Nancy Lobanovich, 505. Could you speak up a little bit because we can't hear you up here. I'm sorry. Hard time. Nancy Lubanovich, 505 P's. And I just wanted to ask Vicki if that also includes Amber Alerts. Ooh, I don't know about that. I can look into it and let you know. Okay. So, yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. We're on the phone call notification, and we've never been notified when an Amber Alert hit on, so I'm going to assume that you were. I, I've been notified on my phone. Okay. Amber. So I would think that we are, but I don't know that for sure. Anyone else like to speak? I'm assuming Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Mayor, how are you this evening? Council? Members of the public? 
department heads. You all look like you're rich. What? They all look at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Especially this side of the table. <laughs> He's not even looking at me, and I know he is. <laughs> As everybody knows, my name's William Lindsay. I live at 314 North Henry Street. I am also the uh, treasurer and head of the Support New Carlisle Police Department Police Levy. The, uh, I've been out and about collecting money to do this uh, campaign to try to get a half a percent income tax levy passed in this town. It will be on the ballot in May 5th. Uh, hi, Randy. I did create a PAC. It is a political action committee. I have raised a few hundred dollars. I need a few hundred more. Uh, you know, everything that you do costs money. I encourage all of the seven council members see me after the meeting with a check. <laughs> Nobody's laughing, <laughs> except for this guy. Sir. You'll have one come. Thank you. A blank would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken to quite a few people. Some of, my, some of the business owners I know, they have asked me, how much do you need? I've told two of them now, a blank check or $500,000 will cover it, and then I can work on next year's election campaign because then we can get our deputies back next week. I have yet to get that high hundred thousand dollar check. They all tell me they're broke. I know they're rich, they're business owners. <laughs> How long would you mind telling him about business owners? Well, <laughs> well he's always yeah. broke. And ask Dale about business owners. Here we yeah. go. Yeah. Well I, I'm a business owner and I ain't got it, you know what, to, to throw out and, uh, anything else to catch it. The, uh, I guess the point I want to get through across tonight, if I can, if I can have a few extra minutes. Just a couple. Yes, Just sir. a couple? Yeah, okay. You're well, pushing a very important thing for the city. We'll uh, I'm going to have yard signs coming. I Hopefully I'll have them Thursday. Anybody who would like to have one in their yard, please see me. I also set up an email address so you the public council, whoever, can email me. It's supposed to be support New Carlisle police levy. However, my left hand transposed a letter before my right hand hit the other letter. So in Carlisle, the L and the S is reversed. That is at woh.rr.com. If you don't reverse those two letters, I will never get it, and I don't know where it'll wind up. It'll probably come back to you. The uh, I've got stats from the sheriff's office for last year, for the first three months to the first three months of this year. The crime rate, in the same time period versus the two years, has gone up 50, well, let me find it here. 43. 43%, yes, thank you. 43.8%. In January, we had 88 reports. 68 reports cost us help. In March, they took 29 reports in the city. I attribute the downfall between the two months is the cold weather, snow, you know, people didn't want to go out and create any crime, I guess. Last month, they took seven, or, uh, 57 reports. We've had a business, I don't know, over on Church Street, I think it was JNR Insurance, there was a young man doing donuts in two different parking lots. A citizen called the SO of the sheriff's office, reported it. Dispatch says it is not an emergency. We will not send nobody out. That kind of irritates me as a citizen. However, since our contract deputies was not on duty, any non-emergency call that we make will not be answered until a on contract deputy is on duty. I don't agree with that, but that's the way it has to be. However, the same young man about four hours later after drinking and doing various things, which I found out, uh, ran into the building and almost drove through his wall. At that point, they called the deputies of the sheriff's office again. I don't know how many cars they sent out, but they did 
reply at that time, <coughs> respond, I mean, because that was classified as an emergency. I guess what I want, really want to say, if we don't get our deputies back in town, we need four deputies minimum in this town to give us 24-7 protection. That's an extra deputy for days off. They can't work 724s. If we don't get them back come summer, when school's out, not saying all the kids in school is creating problems. We have an element in this town that does. We also have an element from other cities that comes into this town and creates problems. The city garage back over here, I believe it is, was broken into, I think, a week ago, last weekend, weekend before. They stole several chainsaws. I don't know what else they took. Maybe uh, one of you two gentlemen knows. What else, did they take anything else besides chainsaws? They stole our four chainsaws, any steel product that we had, uh, four chainsaws, cut off saw, pulse on a blower. Towards now we have to replace again because we did not have a deputy on duty at that, probably at that time, or we only had one. I talked to a deputy the other day, it was Deputy Beller. Beller. I seen him sitting uh, up there by the fire station, so I whipped in and said, wow, you must not be busy at all today. He showed me his clipboard. If there were 16 hours in the day in his shift, he probably still would not have got done. All the calls he had on his clipboard that was not answered from, I don't know, the night or day or week, you know, the weekend before or whatever. They was all non-emergencies, but we, we're going to have to wait till we get our deputies back. If it's an emergency, somebody's breaking into your home, I don't know, Deputy Major Sack, how long would it take you to get here from Moorfield Township if somebody's breaking into my home and I'm hollering, they're going to kill me? 20 minutes, 30 minutes? It won't give me the time, it's going to Yeah, but you're, I'm set if you're in Moorfield Township. <laughs> okay, okay. So who would they send if we didn't have a contract deputy? The area car? He could be any place in the county, correct? He's in the, okay, so he, okay. And how far east? Northampton. So at least 10 to 15 minutes, I'd say. Okay. Well, and I, and I understand that. But we're still looking at 15, 20 minutes to get a deputy to any residence if we're having a break in or something. Or oh, exactly, unless he's on duty. Yeah. Right. He, uh, in fact, on on a certain day of the week, I will not give the day. One certain day of the week, we only have a deputy from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So anytime during the daytime anything happens, we have to wait for a car to come, area one car to come, or whoever they decide to send, depending on what is happening. On another day, we only have a deputy from 8 to 4. Uh, two days, I take that back. And, and two days, 11 to 7. I'm not going to put out the dates or the, or the days that these deputies are off and the days and hours that they're not covered. We only have deputies in this town 80 hours a week. That leaves 88 hours a week that we do not have, in my mind, police protection that is readily available in this city. I'm pretty passionate about uh, cops and fire department. The, uh, you gotta have both or you got chaos. It's just that simple, folks. I need, uh, I need this levy to pass, not only for my safety, for every senior citizen that lives in this town, and there's a bunch of them. I know, I live in a plot full of them. Uh, I'm a senior citizen. Uh, by definition of federal code, I am also handicapped. I'm a, what they call, a, fall under the American Disability Act, okay? Somebody hits me, they can have reach federal charges, even though I'm not 65. However, if they hit me, they won't have to worry about federal charges. <laughs> just, just, you know, to put that out there, in case somebody wants to jump me when I walk out the door. So, <laughs> Bill, what, what, what do we need to fix the situation? We need this levy to pass, basically. We got cars we need to fix. Uh, we have cars we need to replace. We have one with a blown engine. We have one that uh, is, is, I don't even see how it runs. In my opinion, it's so old to be used as a cruiser, it shouldn't even be on the road. It's a 99 Jeep. 
I've been told it does not have a radio in it. The current vehicles they're using has got, uh, oh, one of them's got 102,000 on it. The other one's got like 70 some thousand on it, 76, 78,000, I think. They run eight hours a day. They never get turned off. They get oil changes every month or two just because of the wear and tear that they are running constantly. Uh, I know you might think of 70 some thousand miles isn't that much on a car. The one I drove in here tonight has got 76,000 on it. Mine don't run eight hours a day. Some days it don't run at all. It costs money to maintain this stuff. And, and I guess that's what I need to get out to the public. It costs just to maintain a cruiser for a year, I average, somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 a year. That's the maintenance, oil changes, tires. You know, they go through a set of tires. A set of tires, if they last, what, a year? Definitely, you think a year they might last? You know, you're looking at 500 bucks a tire, four to hey. 500 bucks per tire. They got Bill, four of them. Yes, sir. You let everybody know that's an earned income only, earned income only. Yes. And that also that we are one of the few communities in the entire area, greater Miami Valley, that only have 1% income tax. There's only three of them. Yeah, I think, I don't, is there three of them? I didn't There's think there three, was two any. villages, and we're the only city. Okay. Everything uh, else is at least one and a half or more. Or two. Yeah, most, most of the cities around are, are 2%. Right. Uh, agreed, most of them cities are probably a little bit bigger than we are. But I, don't, I think a half a percent, you know, to strictly for police protection is not a bad thing. It cannot be used for anything else. Right. Uh, the, uh, I, I think that has law behind it. I'm not sure. Am I correct or not, ma'am? The half a percent income tax can only be used for the police department and police department items. Is that not have law behind it? If the income tax can only be used for purposes as stated forth in the ordinance that council passed. Right, and that would be strictly for police department. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Yes, it does say that, yes. just to qualify that. It yep. does say right. police right. only. Yes. Bill, if you would, I want to make sure everybody knows that. It'll right. be on the ballot. May 5th, and it does say that. We've already seen it on the ballot. It does say that on the ballot. Like I said, it's like, he, like the mayor says, a half percent income tax levy. It only affects you if you get a W-2. If you're a retiree, it doesn't cost you anything to vote for this. Uh, I, ju I just, you know, I, I'm trying to get everybody, you know, on the same page to, to pass this thing, get it voted. I think it would have passed last time from what I'm hearing. The only reason it didn't, because it had that big word streets on it. And everybody says, you know, back in May, we just gave them a levy to vote for streets. Now they want more money for streets. What did they do with that money? Okay. Bill, if I could hold you up for a moment. Yes, I think sir. Mr. Lowry has a comment for you. No, I'll wait till he's done. Comment. No, go ahead. I think it's first and foremost, thank you very much for stepping forward and doing this. Yeah. But I have to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Did you say that the car or whoever was doing the donuts and that dispatch of the Clark County deputies was called and they said they would not come out? Because it was a non-emergency. It was not life-threatening or somebody's life was in danger. It was just a kid doing donuts. Okay. In a parking lot. Okay. In a parking lot, my okay. dad. Howie, we need to get a hold of Sheriff Keller. He sat right there and said every call would be answered. They may take a while, and I believe his words were, if it's a dog barking, it may take a little bit longer, but every call will be answered. And that is what he said. I. That is true. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. So apparently, apparently you know, your information, my right information, now. or as close and as California is to New York. Probably, I'd like to ask you to contact him and ask him about that situation. That is wrong. Maybe we can have the sheriff show up at our next meeting. I, I think that's a good idea because on their cars it says to protect nowhere on any vehicle I've ever seen driven by deputy does it say emergency only. Exactly. Never. Exactly. Okay. We have saying. another question for you here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, clarification purposes. Oh, I don't know. I don't clarify much. <laughs> uh, you said that it's a 43% crime rate increase, or is it a 43% increase in calls? It is a 43.8% according to, to the stats I have here. Uh, let, me, let, let me rephrase. Uh, Yes, it says criminal reports. <laughs> it also has total calls on here. 
So the total criminal reports went up 43.8% and calls in general went up 19.4% January to March from 2014 to 2015. That's the only three months I took the stats from. Those stats did come from the sheriff's office. In fact, I think they came from the sheriff himself. And one more question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And he did not ever say that it would be emergency only. That, that statement did not come from any deputy. It did not come from anybody at the sheriff's office, including Sheriff Kelly. Okay. That, that statement came from a citizen that supposedly that's what dispatch told them. Okay. Uh, now, with that said, I do not who that citizen was. I got it secondhand. However, the, the gentleman was out there for four hours doing this where he ran into the side of the building. So I tend to think it may be some, some uh, truth behind that statement. Okay, Council, we have any other questions? Mr. And, and, and if I may, I'm more willing to answer any questions from the public here if they have any. If anybody, or you can see me after the meeting, I'll do my best to answer them. What's the city going to do with what money they're saving? Right now, the money that is for the police department is coming out of the general fund. That means the, the money, the, uh, let's see, I've got, uh, let me find that paperwork here. I can answer that for you, Bill, if you would. Would that be all right? Yes, sir, go ahead. All right, right now, I think we have budgeted 180 some dollars, 180 some thousand dollars for police for the year. If this passes, the levy passes, it may take up to a year for the money to come in from the levy at that point. At that point, that's when we can do something. So it's going to be a little while if the levy passes for us to be able to boot up again with deputies at that point. So just to let everybody know that. The, I think that's how it works, yes. The ordinance, the, takes, the ordinance takes effect immediately. Yeah. And so it will start generating revenue from how soon we actually collect it, though, the income tax, we don't know for sure at that point. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying it's going to take a while. It doesn't happen immediately. You're right. And, and we're, not, we're not going to be booting up with deputies if it does pass right away. It's going to take a while for the money to come in. The, the question that Mr. Graham asked me was the 180000 that we're spending or have airmarked for deputies right now. If the levy passes, that levy is going to generate somewhere short, shy of $500,000. The exact figure is going to be something like $407,042, something like that. I mean, I don't know. And it's going to be just under $500,000 is what this levy would generate. The question he asked me, because we're spending 180,000 now, are we going to take the 180,000 now that we have that he we have budgeted for the police and add it to the 500,000 next year to make a total of 680,000, or the 180,000 dollars coming out of the general fund is that going to go, I don't know, appropriate for streets or maintenance or buy a vehicle or? That's, well, that's the question right, he's asking. I thought I just answered that. It depends on how quick the money comes into the city, if it does pass. Okay. If it passes, we will boot up as soon as we can. Okay. 180 some thousand dollars. We'll be paying for the deputies in the meanwhile, for the two deputies we have. Okay, so that's, next year there wouldn't be the $180,000 out of the general fund. No, because we are going to be earmarking that money that you just mentioned, that's under $500,000, strictly for police protection. Right. And whatever accoutrements they need at that point. Does that answer your question, sir? No. no. I, let me, let me, let me get it. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Believe me, I've had this conversation got, for two exactly months things. with him. I, hang on a minute. He's basically let's, wanting to say, I'm assuming, we originally were budgeting for the four police officers at the time, what was it, a little over almost 400 and some thousand dollars. Once we get the levy in, what are we gonna do with the money in the general fund that was freed up 
from that's what he was the doing. new money. There was no money freed up. I beg your pardon. Well, it's not freed up, but it's but it's not going to the police. Yeah, that's anymore. not so, it was freed up. It was. That's. Excuse me, one minute. Let's let our uh, finance director answer some of this. The the two hundred thousand, we're just kind of rounding that number off, needs to go into the general fund and stay there for unforeseen expenditures. We have no reserve. We have nothing to to use as a backup if something breaks, if somebody retires, if something that is not in our budget this year that we might need next year. So that is going to try to stay to be our cushion. So we can keep ourselves out of fiscal watch and we can start getting stronger and growing. It's not really allocated for anything that we've got to get a savings back in. That was what we had talked about management wise on that. And that's why we're really hoping that. You, you, you said, actually you said one word that caught my ear. <laughs> and the question is, how close are we to fiscal watch? My, my opinion, I'm very concerned about going into fiscal watch. We have used almost all of our reserve to get a budget put together for this year, which leaves us what we talked about, about a $14,000 in the We started with 50, so we're still going in the wrong way. Without the income tax, without the money that we need to put the police back in place, put the reserve back in the general fund, I do believe we will be in fiscal watch. When, I can't tell you. Tomorrow something breaks, it could be tomorrow. It could be the end of the year, it could be next year. Right now, if we stay on track with our very, very tight budget, we might make it to the end of this year. But we really need more income to sustain the obligations that we have with the city. And that is where the extra 200,000 would go back into the general fund to stay there for the obligations that we have. Does that answer? Yes, which just leads to more questions. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know, uh, sir. Bill, Bill, we've we've got over 15 minutes now at this point, and remember, it's a five-minute situation. We discuss that. Five. We discuss very, that every time we it's, talk. It's a very important <laughs> situation. You know, thank you very much for taking the leadership and going forward with this. We really do appreciate it. Well, I just hope I can get it passed. We have one more question before. Sure. <clears throat> Where did you get that information? Yeah, we get that information. It's not. Isn't it part of the park? No, no, no. No, our our parks are New Carlisle parks. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. We appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. News. Yes, ma'am. One more time. News. We need to go forward. Nancy Levanovich, 505Ps. I know um, we keep saying to, we've saved 200000 by getting rid of these deputies or letting them go. Is, was that their salary? Is that what you're saying, that 200000 Benefits that, that includes not only their salary, but also any benefits they have, whether it be insurance or retirement or, or other sort of financial obligations you have for any employee. Um, so that's just not the salary, that's the entire package you would get as an employee. I didn't think we were doing any of that to begin with, insurance. Well, we, as, as part of the contract with the deputies, it's, it's because we're contracting with them, we, we pay that money into um, all those obligations, whether that be salary and everything else. Their, their union requires that. Okay, because it doesn't show it when you, when you send this expense report out. Uh, and also, is it saving anything on like the building that they use, the rental there? I'm assuming it's a rental. The maintenance of equipment, uh, custodial services, linen services. Is, is that included in that 200000 or is that something that's still going to be there? Did you just say linen services? Yeah. That's or what there it's, isn't any that I know of. Well, it says that it building is owned by the city, and that, that, that's a substation that they use. To do the reports and so forth. I'm just saying that's what it says in here, and that's what I was given 
as an expense report. The, the mats? Yeah. The thing it's the mats that are on the floor. Okay, I'm just saying, is that included in that 200000 or is that still no. going to be ongoing? Still. Expense. Let's talk, please. They're ongoing, but we have reduced in this year's budget some of the uh, costs for the uh, buildings, um, utilities, the gas for the cruisers that they're using. We, we scaled everything down. Well, I would imagine you'd do some of the gas, yeah. Yeah. not and so much. And we're looking at, um, I believe we've already stopped the, uh, the mats. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. we have cut back. But the 200 is salary only. Salary to only. That okay. Salary benefit package. Because the rest the of that's pretty hefty. And we've cut a lot out of the board. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll look at the next one. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we're going to go ahead now. Uh, resolutions about committee reports. Any committee reports this evening? Okay, resolutions. We have none this evening. Ordinances. We have an emergency <coughs> ordinance. Uh, introduction to action tonight. Would you go ahead and read that, please? Yes. Ordinance 15 12 E, introduction and action tonight. An ordinance supporting a city manager and fixing compensation for city manager and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I would ask that uh, the compensation be read. I want. He's going to read the whole thing okay. after we do it. Okay. 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 I make a motion that we accept the order. Thank you. Second. Order. Second. Mr. McIntyre seconded. Hang on just a minute. Sure. Now, Mr. Lowry, I'd ask him to read the whole thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You ready, Mayor? Yes, sir. Please. Ordinance 15-12E, an ordinance appointing a city manager and fixing compensation for city manager and declaring an emergency. Whereas a vacancy exists in the city manager position effective April 23, 2015 for the city of New Carlisle and whereas the council has undertaken due diligence and hereby declares that Randy Bridge meets and or exceeds the qualifications as for, set forth in the City of New Carlisle Charter, Section 5.01. And, whereas Council shall appoint a City Manager for an indefinite term and fix his compensation in accordance with the experience, executive, and administrative qualifications as required by the City of New Carlisle Charter, Section 5.01. And, Whereas Randy Bridge agrees to receive this appointment as city manager in accordance with all applicable city of New Carlisle charter provisions. I hate that thing. Whereas Randy Bridge agrees to receive this appointment as city manager in accordance with all applicable city of New Carlisle charter provisions. For the compensation as ordained here effective April 23rd, 2015 and now therefore the city of New Carlisle hereby ordains as follows. Section 1. Council appoints Randy Bridge as city manager for the city of New Carlisle effective April 23rd, 2015 for an indefinite term in accordance with the city of New Carlisle charter. Section 2. Council fixes a compensation for Randy Bridge as city manager for the city of New Carlisle effective April 23rd, 2015 in accordance with his experience, executive and administrative qualifications at the sum of a yearly salary of $66,000 for the first 180 days of his employment and at the sum of a yearly salary of $69,000 thereafter plus all benefits as provided under the charter and city ordinances. Section three, immediate council action is mandatory under the charter. The position of city manager must be appointed and such appointment must be effective on or before April 23rd, 2015. Therefore, this ordinance is hereby declared an emergency. Mr. Thank you, Mayor. sir. Mr. Mayor, I would like for you to explain the particular jobs that Mr. Bridge will have once he, if he is appointed as. Okay, for everybody's information out there, Mr. Bridge is the planning director of New Carlisle at this time. He's going to be doing both jobs 
at least for the 180 days that we're talking about. Uh, we may hire a part-time person, or he may hire a part-time person to do the code enforcement, code enforcement and so forth. Uh, so that's going to lower down the cost to the city at that point uh, for his job and the city manager at that point. And he's agreed to do that. Uh, is that what you did? we're after there? Okay. Yes. Okay. He's also not having a secretary to that's do correct. anything for him. So he's basically doing three jobs. Just to let everyone know that. Any questions from council at this point? Any questions out in the audience? Make it quick, please, Mr. Lindsay. We're trying to get out of here and watch a ball game tonight. No ball games, off limits. Uh, William Lindsay, 314 North Henry. I guess the question I have is, if we have $14,400 left in the budget at the end of the year, what would the pay be for a code enforcement officer at part time? $14,400. A lot less. <laughs> a lot less than what he's being paid at this point for his job. Okay. Second question. Uh, as a resident and as the sitting city manager, current and future, I think it's atrocity that he does not have a secretary in that office. I think at some point, something needs to happen to where he has one or has access to somebody in the office that he can get stuff done through. Of course, if he's the boss, I guess he can pick anybody from it, right? Okay, you I just answered that, my own question. It's something that may happen in the future, but not at this time, that's for right. sure. All right. He Thank seems you. to think that he can be able to handle it. Thank you for the input. I hear he's good. We will see how good. <laughs> that's no question. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, would you please call for the vote, please? Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Without a doubt, absolutely. There he is. That's absolutely okay. a yes. Okay. Mr. Yes. Prebacher. I don't know, let me think about it for a second. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes, I think he'll do an excellent job. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. I'm really excited about this candidate. Pass seven to zero. Thank you very much. And as far as any questions for our future city manager, he doesn't become the city manager until the 23rd of this month, so he would rather not answer any questions until after that, if you don't mind. Then he will be official. Okay. We can go on now. You want to go ahead and read the other ordinances, please. I think they're for introduction. <coughs> Or does 15-13 introduction public hearing in action on 4-2015. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for professional services for the Prentice Drive Phase 2 reconstruction project. Or does 15-14 introduction public hearing in action on 4-2015. An ordinance amending section 1270 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding a conditional use in central business zones. Would you like to read the other business? Yes. Or other business, is there a council, anything you'd like to say? Other business? Would you go ahead and read the other two, A and B there? Yes. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, June 29th at 6.30, and that will be uh, hosted here by the by the city of Smith Park Shelter House, and once again, that's open to the public. Uh, I'm really struggling with this next one. I think I'll, I'll get it right tonight. Uh, Crime Watch meeting will be this Wednesday, April the 8th, at 6:30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Let me do that again. This Wednesday, April the 8th, here at 6:30 at Smith Park Shelter House. I'm, I'm really struggling with that one in the last couple of weeks. Thank you, sir. That's all I have. And I Thank do have you. one more thing, Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Please. I will not be present at the next meeting, and I am in the process of uh, acquiring someone to take my position for that meeting. You'll definitely let us know if we do or do not at that point. Uh, I will let Mr. Kitko know yes, since he's the interim city manager until the 23rd, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Appreciate that. Mr. 
That's all I have. Um, I just want to say you know, briefly that uh, you know I've been you know uh, I've been talking to Carol, you know, and Carol can I asked her about the crime watch and she said that there's not very many people attending the crime the crime watch meetings. You know um, one of the things that you know it's not deputies that's gonna stop crime. It's gonna be your neighbors that's gonna stop crime. Um, I know when somebody broke into my house, my neighbor across the street called. You know, um, you know, people watching out. There was one was prevented on um, New Carlisle Pike here over the weekend or last week, you know. And it was the neighbor that called the police. It wasn't the deputy that stopped the crime. They do the arrest, you know, and do all that other nasty stuff. But it's your neighbors. So come to the crime watch. Um, I'm going to try to make it. I keep forgetting, but I'm sure Carol's going to start calling me and come, come to the crime watch. I'm going to start coming because that's what's going to stop. You know, that's what helps. Mr. Lowry, did you have something? I did. I had two things, but now just one and a half because John spoke, okay? But, <laughs> but uh, seriously, crime watch. And, and I think Deputy Major Sack will agree. Uh, you can put a police officer on every corner and he's not going to stop the crime. It, it's not his job to stop it. Prevent it. It's our job. And we need to work together to do that, to look out for one another. And you're right, John, we need to do that. Uh, I always praise and say, visit the license bureau and I'm going to change that a little bit. Do the license bureau, but I've been leaving a lot of people out. Support local business in New Carolina as well. Not just the license bureau, all the local business in New Carolina. Every one of them. Uh, there's a lot of things here in New Carolina we can do. We don't have to go to Huber Heights or Springfields to do it. And, and, and I've been guilty myself, but we definitely need to support all the business in town and the license bureau. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything? I have a a little comment, one, one second if I may. Uh, last week we had the joint government meeting that we had. If you would like to get next to one of your representatives or the auditor, uh, Clark County uh, commissioners, they were there, all of them were there last, last time. I presume they will be here the next time. Again, it's open to the public. If you'd like to come, it's gonna be right here, the next meeting. Uh, again, if you'd like to talk with any of them, you can ask questions. We'd love to see you if you get a chance to come. I'm sorry, no. Randy? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to point some, a few things out since uh, this event will actually take place prior to the next council meeting. Speedway just submitted plans for their redevelopment project. They're going on the, on the Speedway on the west side. There will be a planning board and board of zoning appeals hearing on April 16th at the fire station. The Board of Zoning Appeals will start at 5.30 p.m. They will be handling some variances that uh, Speedway has requested. One of those variances deals with the width of the driveway and uh, the other variances deal with their signage. The Planning Board will meet at 7 p.m. and they will approve or deny the overall site plan and alley vacation as well. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anything? Anyone out here? Anything to say? Hey, what if... I'm sorry, please. Will Mr. Keiko keep his position with the city after yeah. April 23rd? Yes. Okay. You're talking about as a service director? Yes. Yes, sir. He definitely will. He's acting city manager at this time until the 23rd. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Anything at all? Okay. Executive session. There's none tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering if you were going to say something. We are adjourned.